North and South Dakota State. They're happy to be back home here at the Memorial Coliseum where this afternoon they're going to take on the defending Summit League champions, the Golden Eagles from Oral Roberts University. Hi again everybody, I'm Mike Moss. Welcome to another edition of IPFW Basketball here on CATV. I'm joined today by Dean Jackson and Dean, IPFW happy to be at home where they're 4-1 as opposed to the troubles they've had on the road lately. There is no place like home, Mike, and this is a big game for IPFW, taking on the Summit League defending champion, the league leader, and it's a rare afternoon matinee. That is rare indeed. ORU comes into this game undefeated in conference play at 3-0. They've had some tough non-conference games, Dean, against people like Texas, Arkansas, Texas A&M, and Utah State. Pretty good non-conference schedule. Well, there is no doubt about it. Noel Roberts never holds back when it comes to scheduling tough opponents. This is a program that has so much tradition, and ORU would like to get back to it. ORU also has a lot of size. They're going to have players 6'10", 6'9", 6'8", and 6'6". How does IPFW combat that? Well, they just got to get it inside. IPFW actually has a pretty good inside game from what I have seen. I'm guessing they're probably going to want to turn up the tempo. Oral Roberts doesn't quite have the scoring punch that IPFW has, but again, they've played a different level of competition. Well, that'll be an interesting matchup, especially being played in the afternoon. It's IPFW and ORU, Summit League Men's Basketball, and it's coming up next right here on CATV. He laid out his vision for two democratic class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pinkout? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close, and you'll learn what a pinkout is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Brought to you by College 5 Sports on my network. Digital broadcast 33.2, Comcast 252. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum for this afternoon Summer League Men's Basketball matchup featuring the Golden Eagles of Oral Roberts University and the IPFW Mastodons. I'm Mike Moss, joined by Dean Jackson. And here are the starting lineups. You're seeing IPFW starters introduced now to the crowd. We'll give you ORU's first. Yemi Ogania is a 6'9 senior from Cedar Hill, Texas. Adam Liberty is a 6'2 senior from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Moses E. Hembe is a 6'6 senior from Arlington, Texas. Marcus Lewis, a 6'8 junior from Long Beach, California. And Sean King is a 6'10 senior from Baquia, St. Vincent. The head coach in his ninth year is Scott Sutton, son of legendary coach Eddie Sutton, and he's the second winningest coach in Oral Roberts history. Now the starters for IPFW, and they look like this. A three-guard offense at one guard will be Zach Plackemeyer, a 6'2 freshman from St. Charles, Missouri. Another guard is Ben Bott, six-foot freshman from Muncie, Indiana. The swing guard forward, if you wish, however you want to call it, is DeWitt Scott, 6'6", senior from Chicago. Up front, David Carson, 6'7", junior from Gary, Indiana. And Jerron Burrow, 6'8", senior from Nassau in the Bahamas. The head coach in his third year is Dean Fife. Our officials this afternoon are Terry Weimer, Glenn Mayborg, and Jeff Malham. Dean Jackson, as we said a few moments ago, IPFW likes to play at home where they're 5-1 and one, as opposed to on the road where they are 0-9. And, and they certainly would like to be playing in a facility that had a few more people. It's just the way things work out. A rare matinee here at Memorial Coliseum. But for IPFW, this is a game. If they want to play in the Summit League, this is a statement game for them, no question. ORU are the two-time defending conference champions. They're in the blue uniforms, white trim, white numbers, white lettering, and names are on the back in white. In the circle, Sean King and Jerron Burroughs. Terry Weimer throws it up, and it's controlled by IPFW. They'll be going from left to right here in the first half. 
in the white uniforms. There's Zach Quackemeyer playing in place of Demetrius Johnson. We'll tell you more about that. Leach is out with a knee injury. ORU starting out in a man-to-man -man defense. Ben Botts, talented freshman out of Muncie. Carson unloads. Three-pointer no good, and Lewis pulls down the board. Here come the Golden Eagles. Mike, I got the feeling there that IPFW expected the shot to go in. Didn't really battle for the rebound. Liberty watched by Botts. Down in the block to King, 6'10", banks it off the glass and in. Always got to like the hook shot, the turnaround. Sean King puts ORU on top, 2-0, and we've played about 50 seconds here at the Coliseum. Ben Botts watched by Ihembe. Looks like ORU's trying to stretch that man-to-man -man defense. Pass intended for Carson, knocked out of bounds. They say last touch by David Carson, so it will be Oral Roberts basketball. It's going to be interesting to see how this team plays now that David Carson is back. Transfer from Oakland University was eligible at the start of this semester. Liberty in the corner, give and go underneath Lewis. Shot partially blocked, blocked again by Carson. I think they're going to call David for a foul. No, they're going to call Plackemeyer. Zach Plackemeyer for the infraction, his first, team first. Now you don't talk about fouls, and you talk about good fouls, bad fouls. That was an aggressive foul. That's the type of play that IPFW needs to be making in the paint. Marcus Lewis, just a 47% free throw shooter, and he bangs that off the back of the rim, no good. One more free throw coming. 2-0 is our score. ORU on top. We've played just a little over a minute. Second free throw by Lewis is good. So he's 1-2 at the strike. 3-0. Golden Eagles. Zach Blackemeyer running the point. Rubs off a Carson pick. Gets it back to Botts. DeWitt Scott. Dean, if we can get DeWitt untracked, IPFW can really do some offensive damage. And I have the feeling that he's been playing this year, and he's playing a little bit conservative. I, I can't really put my finger on it. Shot missed by Carson as the shot clock was winding down. Back comes the Golden Eagles. I just, I'm sorry, Mike. I just feel like he could be scoring more points than he is. High post to Sean King wants to drive on Carson. Now they run the weave. Liberty looks down low. Lewis underneath the King. Shot no good. Burles pulls down the board. Back come the Dons with 17.42 left in the first half. Jerron Burroughs watched by King. Carson low block, banks it off the glass and in, and the Dons are on the board. Macedons are playing very well in the paint. They have played very well inside, forcing ORU to take two, three, four shots. And if they can continue to do that for this game, they got a good chance. It's now a three to two score. ORU with the lead. Liberty, watched by Ben Botts, 15 on the shot clock. Ehambi, the jumper off the rim, no. Burroughs with the second rebound. IPFW with a chance to take their first lead of the afternoon on this possession. Plackmire wants to rub off a Burroughs pick. Give and go to Kino. Pass to Scott. Driving in the lane, off the glass, no good. Sean King gets the rebound. Back we go the other way. Liberty on bots. Turnaround jumper short. Picked off by Carson. You're right, Dean. The Don's doing a good job on the boards. DeWitt Scott takes it all away. Backs it off the glass and in, and he draws the foul. Great play. DeWitt Scott says, you know what? You're going to have to stop me, and most likely you're going to have to foul me. Let's see who they call that foul on. It's going to be called on Sean King, his first, team first. Substitutions, Robert Jarvis, 5'11", junior from Humboldt, Texas. Kelvin Sango is a 6'3", junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Jarvis, the leading scorer for ORU, averaging over 16 points a game, and DeWitt Scott calmly drops down the free throw to complete the conventional three-point play. Real quickly, Mike, isn't Humboldt, Texas an oxymoron? <laughs> 5-3 Mastodons at the 16-22 mark here in the first half. 
Sang will watch by DeWitt Scott as IPFW also plays man-to-man -man defense. Jarvis into the block. Kick it back out. Jarvis will launch a three and drain it. That really is a no defense for that. IPFW doing very well, doubling up down low, though. And our lives flash before our eyes right in front of the bench here. Yeah, I saw that ball. I saw the table move, our monitor move towards us. And I saw my knee buckle. <laughs> and you got a bum leg. DeWitt Scott inbounding it right in front of us. Gets it to Ben Botts. Jarvis on him like glue. Plackmeyer taking it strong, and it's blocked by King. Back come Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts has really left that back door open quite a few times early. Sango watched by Carson. Marcello Vili also in now for ORU. 1534 to go here in a half. Lob pass to Vili to King. Turnaround shot off the glass and in. Sean King with his second field goal. And ORU has an eight to five lead. DeWitt Scott, top of the key to Botts. Trying to work on Jarvis. 15 on the shot clock. Now here's Plackemeyer to Burroughs. Skip pass to Carson. David Carson, short on the jumper. He may have got lucky there too because I thought he traveled. Liberty to Sango, too strong off the glass. We got a whistle and a foul. I think Zach Plackemeyer is going to be charged. We have a timeout on the floor. 14.55 left here in the first half. Our score, Oral Roberts 8, IPFW 5. This is IPFW Basketball on CATV. Size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Hi, I'm Russell Simmons. Today I want to talk to you about a very important subject, cruelty to animals. Emmy was a victim of cruelty and someone did something about it. Someone called the ASPCA and put an end to it, because Emmy can't talk. The fact is, animals are abused all over this country and people sit by and do nothing. It's not slick or fly or cool or none of that. It's just cruel. If you're aware of any animal abuse, go to ASPCA.org to find out what you can do now and make a difference. She can't do it for herself. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum. Oral Roberts keys to win today, Dean. Pressuring the ball, attacking the glass, and pounding it inside, taking advantage of their height advantage. And you know what? It looks like IPFW is doing the same thing. I haven't seen much pressure. I have not seen ORU really take it hard to the basket, or certainly they have not taken the advantage inside. And for IPFW, they have to handle the pressure they're going to get from ORU. They need to stretch the defense out. And most importantly, Dane Fife says this, before every game, the team has to make some shots. And in order to make shots, you got to take good shots. Kelvin Sango was fouled by Zach Plackemeyer, and he will shoot two. Sango, a 59% foul shooter, and clanks the first one off the back of the iron, no good. And here is the second, and that's good. So he is one out of two. 9-5 is our score. ORU on top. Less than 15 minutes remaining here in the first half of action on a Thursday afternoon in the Summit City. Ben Botts penetrating, kicking it out to Chris Perkins, who's on the floor for the first time. Give and go to Burroughs. Burroughs takes it strong and gets fouled. We're going to call the foul on Marcello Vili, his first, team second. Let's say it's a non-shooting foul. You see Dane Fife in his third year at IPFW. I really like the inside play of Jawan Burroughs. Just plays like he belongs there. Ben Botts with someone on his back, banks it off the glass and in. The talented freshman from Muncie with his first points. 
9-7, the deficit is two for IPFW. And Liberty watched by Ben Botts. Fairly looking for King in the lob pass. Strength, as he lobbed it right over Jakari Johnson. And he got hit hard, hoiled onto the basketball, able to make the shot. Presence of mind, and as we mentioned, strong. 11-7 now the score. Carson on the right wing. Back up top to Botts. Carson wants to drive baseline, and his shot is blocked. That's the second ORU block. Ball picked up by Sango, and the Golden Eagles want to run, and Sango, oh, they're going to call a block on Burroughs. That's a bad call. That's a bad call, in my opinion. He definitely lowered his shoulder. And Terry Weimer is the official who made the call. First personal on Jerron Burroughs. Third team foul. Coming back in for ORU is Marcus Lewis. And checking out is Sean King. Adam Liberty will inbound it underneath his own basket. Looks for Jarvis. And here is Sango. Back to Liberty. Liberty watched by Botts. Veely again down low. Lewis with strength took it right away from Jakari Johnson. The Golden Eagles now starting to establish themselves inside. You saw a one on one matchup. IPFW cannot let that happen. Burroughs hands it off to Perkins to Botts. I almost think the Dons may want to look for some screens to get Botts free. And we're going to have a foul called this time on Calvin Sango, his first team third. Coming in for ORU, Yemi Ogane and Moses Ihambe. 13.02 left here in the first half. It's 13-7, ORU on top of IPFW. ORU trying to get out to a 4-0 start in the Summit League. A year ago, they won their first eight conference games. Perkins watched by Jarvis. Macedon's trying to be patient here. David Carson for Burroughs in the block. Nice job, Steen with it, almost got it knocked away. And taking it up and knocking it down for his first points of the day. 13-9, we near the 12 and a half minute mark. Ogagne to Vili. Down low to Lewis. Great job of cutting him off. Kick it back out. The three is no good, but Feely with the offensive board and a fresh 35. Lewis spin move. That's no good. Nice Burles rebound with the board. Nice rebound. And they're battling for it. There was a letdown there for a few moments, but they're back in there. Jakari Johnson, the shot off the rim, no, and Lewis grabs the rebound. We're under 12 minutes left in the first half. 13-9 our score, the visitors from Tulsa, Oklahoma on top, and traveling call on Lewis. That brings us to a timeout. 11.52 remaining here in the first half. It's the Golden Eagles 13, the Mastodons 9, and this is IPFW Basketball on CATV. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, Unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. 
want to take a moment to thank today's game sponsor, 816 Pint and Slice, located at 816 South Calhoun Street in Fort Wayne. For fine pizza and drinks, it's 816 Pint and Slice. And Mike's treating us this afternoon. <laughs> That's what the rumor is. Unconfirmed. 11.52 left here in the first half at the Memorial Coliseum. Along with Dean Jackson, I'm Mike Maz, and IPFW trailing the two-time defending conference champion Golden Eagles of Oral Roberts, 13-9. Macedon's with a the basketball. They're in the white jerseys. Chris Perkins on a turnaround jumper. In and out, no. Rebound, Marcus Lewis. And ORU likes to get the ball down the floor quickly. They wanted to stop down there. They got it. Now let's see what they do with it. Feely driving on Jaco Egerich. No good. And we're going to have a push off, I believe, on Lewis. Marcus Lewis picks up his first foul, fourth team foul. And good defensive work there by Arme, uh, should say, Jaco Egerich, the senior out of Croatia, in for the first time. Sean King back on the floor along with Ihambi, Lewis, Ogagne, and Robert Jarvis. Burroughs wants to take it inside. Shot up and in. Nice push up. John Burroughs now with four points. And what you're seeing the Mastodons do, they know exactly they have to play within themselves. They're not getting too flustered. They're not, they're just taking good shots as they needed to do. Oh, Gagne, oh, blocked by Burroughs, but we have a whistle. And Jakari Johnson will be called for the foul. His first team fourth. And Ogagne will go to the line to shoot two, but Dean, it was nice seeing Jerron Burroughs get up in the air and swat that ball away. Yeah, and that ball is still rolling in the concourse about four rows up. Emil Gagne knocks down the first of his two free throws. That's his first point on the day. 46% free throw shooter coming in. That one in and out. Egerich with the rebound. It's 14-11. The ORU lead is three with 10.47 to go here in the first half. It's in a bit of a taller lineup for the Mastodons. To Witt Scott, to Jakari Johnson, up top to Egrich. Lead pass, Perkins. A little too hard, but Jakari Johnson with the board. Scott for three. That's strong. Ihambe outdoes is Chris Perkins for the rebound. That's a possession that really hurt because the Mastodons caught ORU sleeping for just a second. And now here they come back. Steal by Jakari Johnson, driving on Jarvis. Shot no good. Perkins with the putback, however. Good follow up by Chris Perkins. All's well that ends well, I guess. Yeah, a turnover converted into points, 14-13, with 10.05 left in the half. Ihambe, again, they work it down low. Spin move, a hook shot by King, in and out. He gets his own rebound and knocks it back in and draws the foul to boot. That hurts. That's number eight for King. Egridge picks up the foul, his first, team fifth. And again, it was a second chance basket by Sean King. So he will try to complete a conventional three point play. King averaging nine and a half points a game. The free throw is good. Liberty will come back on the floor. You may have overheard Scott Sutton question the officials why he couldn't get Liberty on the floor prior to the free throw. He has a good point. Sure does. 17-13, ORU with the four-point lead. Scott, looks like IPFW is going to try to run the weave. Three-pointer on the way, and good by DeWitt Scott. You know, Mike, I was just getting ready to say a three-pointer would be nice right now. IPFW again draws to within a single point, 17-16. As we are under nine and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Liberty. Takes the feed from Lewis, being hounded by Jakari Johnson. Nearly walked with the ball there. Robert Jarvis with 13 on the shot clock. Wants to drive on Jakari Johnson, pull up jumper, good. Wow, Jarvis now with a deuce and a tray for five points. That's just a playground play right there that says, I'm gonna take this shot. Egerich, top of the key. 
Hands it off to Perkins. To Jakari. Egrich will try a long distance shot and knock it down. Jelko Egrich, if he gets hot, look out. And the crowd gets into it. We're tied at 19. 8.43 left here in the first half. Liberty again working on Jakari Johnson. Lewis in the block. Partially blocked by Burleson. Scott pulls away with the ball. And again, Mike, two people in the paint making sure that his shot was the toughest possible. Again, IPFW the chance to take their first lead. Three-pointer by Scott, no good, and Liberty pulls down the rebound. Golden Eagles on the run. Liberty wanting to go coast to coast. He needs to get the backboard first, though. And they're going to say the ball went uh, hit the support, which will be a turnover. IPFW gets the ball. Ben Botts back in, replacing uh, DeWitt Scott. Vili back in for Oral Roberts, replacing Lewis. Chance for IPFW to have their first lead of the game. Perkins to Botts. Pass intended for Perkins, knocked out of bounds by Jarvis. And that will bring us to a timeout. 7.59 left here in half number one. And we're all deadlocked, 19 apiece. You're watching IPFW Basketball on CA TV. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne, your graduate university. Buddy, there you see a look at the Summit League Conference standings. You see IUPUI and Oral Roberts on top at 3-0, and Oakland 3-1, and and then you see a three-way tie between North Dakota State, IPFW, and Southern Utah, all 2-2. Two and two. Centenary and Western Illinois, 1-2. and two. South Dakota State, 1-3, and three. and UMKC brings up the rear at 0-4. Players coming back onto the floor. We're tied 19 apiece, 7.59 left here in the first half. Jakari Johnson inbounds it to Jelko Egrich, who hands it to Chris Perkins. IPFW has never led, but they have an opportunity here. Egrich inside for Carson. David kicks it out. Ben Botts for three. No. Egrich knocks the rebound out of bounds. It'll be ORU basketball. Mike, as we looked at those conference standings, folks always thought that the, the Midcon, the Summit League, was a Valpo conference only. That's not true. IUPUI, Oakland, and of course, Or Roberts have always been there in contention. Oakland won a couple of nail biters in the Dakotas last week. Liberty lob pass to Vili. Pass picked off by Perkins, and IPFW wants to run. Perkins, Jakari Johnson reverse layup, no good, and Vili pulls down the board, and Back come the Golden Eagles. Jarvis unloads a quick three. King with that long arm pulls down the board, banks it off the glass, and draws the foul to boot. We saw two things right there. We saw two teams that wanted to run. That's fine, but you got to get a good shot. You got to be under control. IPFW wasn't, Oral Roberts wasn't, but King was in that spot like he's been most of the afternoon. And it doesn't hurt to be 6'10 and have long arms. The foul was on Chris Perkins. His first. So Sean King, who already has 11 points, going after number 12, and he drains it. He's two for two at the stripe now. 22 19. ORU back on top by three. 
pass intended for Carson, and it's out of bounds. Turnover, Mastodons. Mastodon's playing pretty well right now, but they need to remember they got to stay calm, they got to stay poised, and not start forcing things. Jerron Burroughs will check back in, replacing Jelko Egrich. And he'll draw the defensive assignment of Sean King. I mean, there really isn't a point that you need to panic right, right now. Still plenty of time, just under seven minutes left in the first half. Ihambe from outside, that's off the rim, and King again, and they're going to say he stepped on the end line. Nice break for the Mastodon. Mike, there really ever, never is a point to panic, but the point is, is there's not a point to get concerned. It's just a couple point game. You just got to stay within your game plan. Oh, Roberts enjoying a 16-11 advantage on the boards right now. Here's Chris Perkins trying to rub off a David Carson pick, a two-man game, and Carson will load it up from the outside. That's off the rim, no good. Back comes Adam Liberty. Still feel like they should have been fighting for that rebound. Lewis on the block, wants to work on Carson. Spins left, spins right, banks it short. King taps it, keeps it alive, and it's picked off by Botts. Good hustle by the freshman from Muncie. And you see the team foul situation. Ben Botts from downtown off the rim. Boy, IPFW cannot buy a three-point bucket. They're now two of seven from behind the arc. They just need to be patient and try to set some things up on the half court. Lewis. Oh, they're going to call the block? Not so sure about that. Wow. I think David Carson has called for the personal. I believe. I thought initially it was going to call player control foul, Dean. I was thinking that same thing. Mike, real quick look at the stats. IPFW shooting 33%, 8 of 24. Or Roberts, not much better, 8 of 21 for 38%. Both teams doing a pretty good job of turnovers. IPFW just two, or Roberts three. IPFW eight points in the paint, or Roberts ten. So this game is a close one. Marcus Lewis misses the first of two free throws. He's now one of three at the free throw line so far today. He has three points. And we talked about trying to force things. Neither one of these teams has scored a bucket on the fast break. Lewis does convert the second. And he will take a seat. Ogagne back on the floor. 23-19 is our score. Oral Roberts with a four-point lead. IPFW with a basketball. As we're down to 545 left here in the first half. Perkins to Botts. Boy, trying to find Burroughs. He's double teamed and he calls a timeout. 30-second timeout. Comes with 538 left here in the first half. Good move by the freshman. Want to remind you that for Tickets to IPFW Athletic Events, you can call 260-481-6000, or you can go to the IPFW Athletics website. It's at GoMastodons.com. Basketball tickets are also available at the Coliseum box office. Discount packages are available in family four-packs and for senior citizens, senior citizens Saturdays. And bring your group to the hoop packages. And from what I understand, too, if you buy 10 or more tickets, there's a chance if you ask nicely, you can get a photo opportunity with Mike Moss. Careful, Mr. Jackson. Well, if they ask you nicely, I don't, wouldn't I don't take a good picture. That's why I've been happy to have this job for 11 years. <laughs> Players coming back on the court. And it will be IPFW's basketball. Egridge back in and he gets it to Botts. Ben Botts to Jakari Johnson. Burroughs wants to go baseline. Driving on King, tries to force it up, short. Sean King, perhaps a touch of intimidation there. Gets the rebound, and back comes ORU. And would you be intimidated by King underneath? I would. Wild well, pass into King. We skip it out, Ihambe for three. Moses Ihambe in the scorebook for the first time today with a triple. I believe this is the biggest lead of the game for ORU. 26-19 as we are under five minutes now left here in the first half. Jakari Johnson knocks down a three. Finally called a three. And that's a big three-pointer. Not only does it cut the lead in half, 
or closer, I should say. It's a big momentum bucket. 26-22 now the score. Johnson nearly came away with a steal. He handy being watched by Chris Perkins. Chris goes for the loose ball. And they're going to say that the ball touched the end line last touch by Perkins. So ORU retains possession with 16 seconds left on the shot clock. David Carson in for Jaco Egerich for IPFW and Robert Jarvis will come in for Moses C. Hambe for ORU. 4.20 left until halftime. At halftime, we'll be joined by IPFW women's head basketball coach Chris Paul. One of the nicest guys around. One of the most frustrated coaches around, too, but we'll fill you in on that later. Liberty with a pull-up jumper in and out. Burroughs gets way up in the air to pull that rebound down. He may not be so nice during practice or during the game. Yeah, it's been tough going for the women's team as of late. FW wins some trouble. Potts forces a shot up and knocks it down. The little engine that could. Four points for Ben Botts. 26-24. Just a two-point lead for ORU. That was the portrait of persistence. Boy, Jacari Johnson doing a nice job on Sango. Jarvis up top to Liberty. Three and a half minutes to go until the half. King, again in that low block, wants to work on Carson. A little walk, perhaps, but count the bucket. IPFW did a pretty good job there. Sometimes King's just going to get points. That's all there is to it. Well, he's got 14 of them so far. 28-24, ORU. Pass and... Oh, knocked of glass. Fight for it. King to Sango. Sango driving. Oh, blocked by Burroughs. They're going to call it goaltending. Credit Sango for the basket. And we have a timeout on the floor. 2.59 left in half number one. It's ORU 30, IPFW 24. And you're watching IPFW Basketball on CA TV. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. I can no longer make my mortgage payment. We won't be able to make our mortgage. I can't pay my mortgage right now. Life throws everyone lots of curves. Sometimes it's a loss of income or an expensive health emergency. If that happens to you, call the people expecting your payment and let them know. They'll want to work something out. So at the first sign of payment trouble, call. They can help, but only if they know you need help. To learn more, visit HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. That's HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. Back at the Memorial Coliseum, you see Ben Potts force up the shot and knock it down. And now you see ORU on the break. Now let's watch here. This is that goaltending play. Wow, that's close. In order for it to be goaltending, it has to be coming down or you have to interfere with the basketball above the imaginary cylinder. I didn't see it. Of course, we didn't have a great angle either, but I didn't see it, Mike. Well, fortunately for you and me, Dean, we're not wearing striped shirts. David Carson blocked by King out of bounds. Fortunately for fans and players, we're not wearing striped shirts. <laughs> And coaches. 2.48 left in the half. IPFW trailing by six. David Carson to inbound it underneath his own basket. Burroughs trying to drive on King. Spin left, spin right. Shot hangs on the rim and then drops away. King rebounds it, and here comes Sango to Adam Liberty. IPFW now just 10 of 29 from the floor. Mike, you've seen more IPFW games than I have of late. It just seems, in this contest, IPFW seems content just to go inside to the paint. And they've had success in there, but I think they've got to diversify, and they've got to open up things on the half court. Eight on the shot clock. Jarvis kicks it out. Jumper knocked down by Ogagne, his first field goal. He has three points. It's crunch time now. 
Now we got a whistle underneath. King hits the deck, and Sean King will be called for the foul. That is his second, team fifth. That will bring Marcus Lewis back onto the floor. 2.04 left here in the half. IPFW will have the ball underneath their own basket. Chris Perkins will pull the trigger. Dewitt Scott back on the floor. Botts has it knocked away so he can dribble it again. To Perkins. 20 on the shot clock, so there's plenty of time on the possession. Botts being hounded, and he is fouled by Adam Liberty. Botts obviously not the tallest player in the court, perhaps not the most gifted player in the court, but is very confident, very calm, stays with his game. Boy, Ben Botts was trying to do a selling job on the official, said he was in the act of shooting, but didn't get it. There was no way of shooting. There was no way. He tried, though. David Carson again to inbound. Botts, quick shot, off the rim, no, and Jarvis comes away with the board. I'm not sure that was the best shot. We're down to 95 seconds left in the first half. Oh, Gagne brings it back out. ORU with an eight point lead, 32-24. They're spreading it out, but they gotta watch the back door. IPFW's defense forcing them out to the outside on the perimeter. 10 on the shot clock, Adam Liberty, top of the key. He's gonna drive, pull up jumper, no. Ball knocked out of bounds, and it should go to IPFW. It will. 112 left in the half. Key possession for the Dons. They're down by eight, and they'd like to be a bit closer when they head into the locker room. Chris Perkins hands it off to DeWitt Scott. Back to Perk. Burroughs high post. Looking whistle away from the ball. Oh, Gagne is called for his first. More importantly, it's the team seventh. So one and one coming for IPFW. And let's see who's going to walk to the line. <laughs> Nobody knows who's, I guess it's going to be David Carson. Hembe comes back in and he'll replace Sango. Only the second time this game that IPFW has gone to the line. David Carson, since he became eligible, just under 70% shooter. But he gets the fortuitous bounce, the home court bounce, shall we say. And it drops through. David now with three points and he has one more. Jaco Egerich is at the scorer's table. If David Carson makes the free throw, he'll replace David. And it's good. So Carson two for two at the line. IPFW now three of three at the stripe in the half. And more importantly, they close the gap to six. As we near the 52nd mark. Liberty to Jarvis. There's Lewis on the block. Wants to work on Burroughs. And he split. Burroughs and Egerich banks it in. And immediately ORU calls a timeout to lead back up to eight with 38 seconds to go. That's just, they just snuck one in there. A strong move. Now, each team has used their obligatory timeout in the first half, otherwise they'd lose a 30. And Dean, it's so important now, there's gonna be a three second differential shot clock, game clock. IPFW basically needs to use up the time and score. I want to remind you to learn more about Mastodon Sports by tuning into Mastodon Spotlight each Wednesday and Friday here on CATV. Here's truly reviews the recent IPFW sports activities. We look at game footage and visit with coaches and players. Again, look for Mastodon Spotlight now in its ninth year, Wednesdays at 7.30 and Fridays at 6.30 right here on College Access Television. Nobody breaks down the Mastodons like Eminem. Yeah, it's been a labor of love when we we're in our ninth year of doing it. Ben Botts with a basketball. IPFW down 34-26 as we near the end of the first half. Down to 20 seconds. Again, about a uh, 3.2 second differential game clock and shot clock. Botts 
being loosely guarded by Liberty. Now we're down to eight seconds. Bots pass is picked off. Here comes Jarvis. Jarvis blocked by Perkins. Foul on Perkins with .9 seconds left. Good defense by ORU there, Dean. Absolutely. ORU not letting up in the final seconds of this first half. And it's no secret. I mean, you got to play full. You got to play hard. And Mike, I'm just going to call it. IPFW has played well. They have not played great, and they haven't finished off more than a few plays in this first half. And they're still in this game, though. First of two free throws by Jarvis is good. He now has a half a dozen. We mentioned that he came into this game averaging just over 16 points a game, the leading score, and he's become the sixth man for the Golden Eagles. Second free throw good as well. I don't think they should have went to halftime with a 10-point lead. Oh, that's just me. I think four, six points may be more reasonable. IPFW squandered some opportunities, but that's just how it is. At the break, 36-26, Oral Roberts on top of IPFW. When we come back, we hope to be chatting with women's head coach Chris Paul. That's after the break. You are watching IPFW Basketball on CATV. I guess I'm like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to the website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. You might be surprised to know the biggest dangers your pet faces are everyday dangers like drinking from puddles, being boarded, squirrels in the park, and fleas and ticks. Being a pet is risky business. That's why it's important for every pet to receive a risk assessment and wellness exam twice a year. A risk assessment from your veterinary professionals helps create a unique risk profile for your dog or cat. Your veterinarian can then develop a disease protection plan that's right for your pet and the disease threats in your area. Best of all, twice a year exams help your veterinarian detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So reduce the risks. Contact your veterinarian today for your pet's wellness exam. Because being a pet is risky business. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pink out? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close and you'll learn what a pink out is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Pizza! Pizza! I must eat! Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man! Honey! Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back, everybody, to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. It's halftime of our matinee encounter between Oral Roberts University, the defending Summit League champions, and IPFW. And the visitors from Tulsa stretched out a lead. They lead at the break by 10, 36, 26. And they have never trailed. IPFW did tie the game once at 19, but uh, ORU has stretched it out. And uh, we are going to be joined by a member of the women's basketball coaching staff, and she is getting I herself can't keep these set things up. On. Well, Jenny Green, you, you'll do just fine. We'll just hold it. That's good. Jenny Green is uh, one of Chris Paul's assistants, and the first question I need to ask you, Jenny, is did you get any sleep? A solid four hours, yeah. <laughs> well, what we're referencing, the women's basketball team just returned from a six-day, three-state, three-game road trip, where unfortunately they lost all three games to 
South Dakota State last Saturday to North Dakota State on Monday night and last night at the University of Detroit. And I, I know that uh, it was a somewhat quiet bus ride back from the Motor City, Jenny, because for some reason all of a sudden the team is just not able to hit any shots. No, yeah. We're struggling right now, you know, there's no doubt about it. We're struggling scoring, and for some reason for, with this team, when we don't score, then we don't have the defense of pressure that we're looking for. Um, and, you know, we're just a team that feeds off our scoring. Uh, so, you know, we're going to get back in the gym today. We're here to support the men. Uh, we have practice uh, immediately following this game, and that's what we're going to work on is, you know, just shooting the ball. Girls need to be relaxed and understand that we we have solid we have solid shooters we have solid players and uh, our shooting problems aren't going to continue. Well, one good thing that's going to happen is the next four games on the schedule are at home. Right. Right. And uh, this coming Saturday will be uh, the first of those four here in the Coliseum against the ladies of Centenary College right. out of Shreveport. So, from the coaches' standpoint in their minds. How important is it now for the next few games to be at home where you don't have to travel, get on the bus, go to hotels, or what have you? Oh, it's crucial. You know, we've had pretty good success so far this year um, at home. You know, obviously the road hasn't treated us well. Um, and just with a young team, you know, I think, you know, the first step is to take care of our home game, home floor, you know, and get the W's when we have to. Um, and for the most part, we've done that this year. So we fully expect as a coaching staff to come in um, and give Centenary everything we have. You know, we're, we're telling them, you know, coaches are frustrated, players are frustrated. We're going to take all that frustration out on them and, you know, put a solid performance out there and we're going to get a win. Well, Saturday's game will be followed by a game Monday night against Oral Roberts, right. one of the favorites in the conference. Right. And then uh, later on, the games against Oakland University, who is the favorite to win the conference. Right. And uh, then a non-league game against Texas Pan American. So a chance to right the ship, so to speak. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's an opportunity, you know, and our girls, you know, we, we have different issues that we're working through. But one thing we always say is our girls are very resilient. You know, we're going to come into practice and there's going to be all kinds of energy. And, you know, this is, this is a group of 14 girls that aren't going to quit. And, you know, with that attitude, we're going to get it done. We're going to figure out a way, you know, to put the ball in the hole and, and everything's going to fall into place sometime here soon. Well, well, our final question to you, we'll ask you to prognosticate. Can the men's team rally from this halftime deficit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they just, um, you know, they're just going inside every time they get an opportunity or Roberts is going inside. So, um, you know, they're, they're going to figure it out. Sure, Dane's got them going in. in halftime right now so well we appreciate you coming over and no uh, better days are ahead for the women's team that's absolutely. for sure absolutely absolutely thank you we've been chatting with jenny green one of the assistants on chris paul staff for the women's basketball team we'll take a break again it's halftime here at the coliseum and ipfw's men is trailing oral roberts 36 26 and we'll be back after this timeout on ca tv I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. glycerides or trays have to do to get noticed. Heart disease and stroke? Really? We should pay her more attention. Normal triglycerides are below 150. High triglycerides increase your risk of heart disease. And if you're a woman, that risk goes up even more. After standing in the shadows of good and bad cholesterol, triglycerides, also known as the forgotten fat, is ready to share the spotlight and the attention. Next time you have your cholesterol or blood fats tested, ask your doctor about the role triglycerides play in your heart health. Remember to ask your doctor about the good, the bad, and the forgotten fat. For more information on all of your blood fats, the good, the bad, and the forgotten, go to ForgottenFat.com. And remember, normal triglycerides are under 150. 
This message brought to you by Sister to Sister, working together for healthy hearts. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pinkout? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close, and you'll learn what a pink out is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back once again, everybody. It's halftime here at the Memorial Coliseum, along with Dean Jackson. I'm Mike Moss. And the IPFW Macedons trail the Golden Eagles of Oral Roberts 36 to 26. We're going to see some first half highlights here momentarily as you get a look at the crowd. And while we wait for those highlights, Dean, you mentioned, and it's funny because Jenny Green mentioned too, oh, are you going inside in the first half almost every time? And they're shooting, what, 46%, 46.4%? It's hard to miss shots when you go in the paint. IPFW right there, nice shot. David Carson banks it off the glass and in. Uh -huh. Don's on the run there. DeWitt Scott made the bucket and drew the foul. Quick action passing-wise by ORU, and they knocked down a long shot. There's that lob pass, and here's Lewis. One thing I noticed, Dean, is that ORU seems to have very, very good upper body strength. I was going to mention that, too. IPFW is still largely a young team, and you get guys that are 6'7", 110, or excuse me, 210, 205. Here's a good play. Jakari made the steal, missed the shot, but a good follow-up by Chris Perkins. And then here is the six foot 10 inch Sean King again. Missed the shot, got his rebound and put it back in and again drew the foul. Scott unloads from outside and knocks it through. Robert Jarvis, who is averaging over 16 points a game, made the jumper there. A long three point field goal by Jaco Egrich. Again, Ben Botts, unfortunately, just not tall enough and a rather easy rebound for Sean King. I think everything's easy for Sean King. <laughs> and then here, pull up jumper. Now you see that shot, but IPFW had trouble in the first half connecting on the long ball, only hitting three of eight. And there's the shot of the day so far, as far as I'm concerned, by Ben Botts. And again, King inside, splitting two defenders and pay taking it home, and then Lewis makes the bucket. Those are your first half highlights. Now let's give you the numbers. IPFW, just 10 of 30 from the floor, 33%, three of eight from three-point range, three of three at the foul line, six assists, 15 boards, and two steals, and ORU, 13 of 28 from the floor, 46%, two of five for 40% from three-point range, and they've hit eight of their 12 free throws. They also have six assists, 21 rebounds, and two steals. And uh, we will see what happens in about two and a half minutes. Again, it's halftime. The leading scores, you see King 14, Jarvis 7, Lewis 6 for ORU, DeWitt Scott 6, Jerron Burroughs and Ben Botts 4 apiece. Again, 36-26 our score. And we're back with the second half in a couple of minutes right here on CATV. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. What's it like when you hear your calling? Will you remember where you were? Will you ignore it? Or will you listen? What if it calls?
cause you to go halfway around the world. To share your skills. To serve people you've never met. To do things you never thought you could. What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? Thursday afternoon, Summit League basketball. Teams back on the floor getting ready to start the second half. The starters are on the floor for IPFW. That's Plackemeyer, Botts, Carson, DeWitt Scott, and Jerron Burroughs. ORU will have the ball first. That's Adam Liberty to Ihembe. Try to work it down low to Lewis. And a three-second call on Oral Roberts. Good defense right there, Dean. Well, that's just it. IPFW making Oral Roberts start to guess what they're going to do. Three seconds inside. Let's see how that creates an opportunity for IPFW here to start the second half. Macedon's down by 10, so they need to put some points on the board. They have had a history of good starts to the second half this year. Bots baseline drive. Oh, blocked by King. And back come the Golden Eagles. They're not going to win that battle very often if you're Ben Botts going up against Sean King. Oh, are you in the blue uniforms going from left to right on your TV screen here in the second half? Oh, Gagne. Down low to Lewis. And kick it back out. Ihembe from downtown. In and out, no. David Carson. Outlets it to Zach Plackmeyer. There's Burroughs. Wants to work on Lewis. Give and go. Goes left, goes right, throws it out to DeWitt Scott. I'm liking what I'm seeing to start this second half. Shot is short. Carson fights for the rebound. And let's see if Lewis fouls him. That is who fouls him. Marcus Lewis picks up his second personal first team foul on ORU here in the second half. And it's a non-shooting foul, so IPFW will inbound the ball underneath their own basket. We were talking during the break, Mike, about how in the first half IPFW was either content going inside or taking the three ball. And inside game wasn't horrible. The outside game, they missed five out of the eight shots they took. This half, I think they have to be more patient. And as I said, I, I like what they're doing so far. Plackmeyer from Burroughs, three-point shot, no good. Rebounded by Hembe, and here's Liberty bringing up the ball. Well, Gagne watched by Scott. It's like IPFW trying to stretch out that defense. See Hembe in and out, no. DeWitt Scott with the rebound. Boy, Scott Sutton up off his bench, screaming that David Carson was holding. Plackmeyer playing the point in place of Demetrius Johnson, who's out with a knee injury. And that really has changed things for this squad. Give and go, and jamming it home is Jerron Burroughs. He now has a half a dozen points. Nice feed from David Carson. First points of the second half for either team. He played a little over two minutes of the second half. IPFW in their man-to-man -man defense. Ogagne. Inside the King. Offensive foul on Sean King. His third, Dean, that could come back to haunt the uh, ORU team. How long will they keep him in? We'll find out. Robert Jarvis coming in. and Looks like Moses Ihembe will have a seat. And there's Marcello Vili. And you may have your answer right now. 
Vili, a 6'7 senior out of Oklahoma City, will come in for Sean King. Not trying to be cliche, but the time is now. Their leading scorer is out of the game. They have not scored in just under three minutes. IPFW has to make hay right now. David Carson taking it on Vili. Oh, he made the bucket, but they're not going to count it. No continuation. Terry Weimer says the foul is going to be on Vili, and that's his second. One gets the feeling, Dean, that Dane Fife in the locker room said, attack, attack, and attack the basket some more. Bots underneath for Carson. Blocked, but blocked into the back of the Scott Burroughs. Wants to move on Vili. Oh, unfortunate bounce. Lewis with the rebound. But they're working for it, Mike. They're showing aggression. Liberty. Look at around the horner. Inside for Lewis. Driving on Burroughs. Count the bucket, and there's a foul. I think Burroughs is going to get hit with the foul. And Oh my, interesting. They're gonna count the bucket, but call the foul on Lewis after he released the shot. That's his third, team fourth. Then that would be one that we would love to see a replay on. Wow. So count the bucket by Lewis, and it's now 38, and well, you got your wish, Mr. Jackson. All right, let's take a look. I also think it's a good call because the ball had been let go. Carson gets the friendly roll. David Carson now with six points. Down to an eight-point game. Let's see how the defense holds up. Jarvis just inside a three-point line. Shot no good. Burroughs with the rebound. And Gerano bringing it up the floor himself. Now gives it up to Zach Plackmeyer. Nice for him to slow it down. Ben Botts. Burroughs wants to work on Vili. Takes it strong and knocks it down. Nicely done. Jerron Burroughs now with eight points. And IPFW has cut the lead to six, 38-32, as we are under 16 minutes left here in the second half. Inside to Lewis. And no, oh, the shot, no good. Ball tipped out to Plackmeyer. At one, at one point, three white jerseys in there for IPFW. And Burrow did a nice job of just holding his hands up, straight up in the air. Carson misses on a long shot. Back come the Golden Eagles. Liberty kicks it out to Gagne, who misses. 38-32 with 15-15 left. IPFW has never led. We're tied once at 19. Plackmeyer to Carson, and he's open. Banks it off the glass and in. He may have got the foul. They didn't call it, though. David Carson, the transfer from Oakland University, also with eight points. And now it's just a four-point game, and we're under 15 minutes. Haven't had the under 16-minute timeout yet. Jarvis behind the arc, no good. Offensive board by Ogagne, however, and a fresh 35 for ORU. They have hit just one of six in this second half. Perimeter passing, Jarvis to Ogagne. Vili, boy, they work it around well. 17-footer is good by Adam Liberty, and that's his first points of the game. And that was just surely a function of ORU deciding we're going to shoot till we make it. The lead back up to six, 40 to 34. And we're nearing the 14 minute mark. David Carson to Plackmeyer on the wing. Zach, a freshman. 12 on the shot clock. Scott. Nice. Beautiful. Done. A three for the senior from Chicago. Mike, he I'll be. And I'll be real honest with you. When IPFW launches the three, it has been suspect. I didn't like that shot going up. Now to DeWitt Scott's defense, he's been a somewhat streak shooter for four years. Vili misses. The rebound by Ben Botts. 
here comes the freshman from Muncie Central. This is quite a stretch. We haven't had our under 16 timeout and we're doing the 13 minute mark. Plackmire goes up for the shot and he is fouled. And he will shoot two when we return. 13-16 left here at the Coliseum. It's ORU 40, IPFW 37. And this is IPFW Basketball and you're watching it on CATV. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. at the Memorial Coliseum. DeWitt Scott, the senior out of Chicago, drains the three. One of two threes he's made today. Now you see that three right there, Mike, but IPFW has been doing it in the paint for the last six minutes. They have outscored Oral Roberts six, excuse me, ten to two here in the second half of points in the paint. Zach Plackmeyer, 6'2", freshman out of St. Charles, Missouri, was fouled. <clears throat> And he gets the friendly roll. That was a little scary there for a second. His first point of the day. Zach is a 92% foul shooter, and he gets the friendly roll again. He doesn't get it for performance points, though. And IPFW now down by just a single point, 40 to 39 at the 13-15 mark. And no movement on the ORU bench to get their two leading scorers back in. There's Adam Liberty. Watched by Perkins and Potts. Nearly had it stolen. But Jarvis is Johnny on the spot. King is back on the oh, floor. Dean, and they step on the end line. IPFW will get the ball and a chance to take their first lead of this game. As soon as I said that I saw him on the court, <laughs> he is playing a little tentative, though, as you would with three fouls with 12 minutes to play. And it looks like a it looks like a technical foul has been called. I think on the ORU bench, but I'm not 100% sure. Although they're flashing up a second foul. Oh, it is on Jarvis. Technical counts as a team foul on a player. So it's six team fouls. And it looks like Ben Botts is going to go to the line to shoot two. Ben has four points so far today. Make it five, and we're tied at 40. And I believe that was a technical foul called on Robert Jarvis. And IPFW should take in their first lead at the 12.53 mark. 41-40. Bots now with six, and IPFW will retain possession of the basketball. And here's the opportunity, Dean, that's been afforded them. They have the lead. Now they want to try to build on it. Eggerich will inbound it to Perkins. Chris, watched by Sango. Rubs off an Eggerich pick. Give and go. And Z, oh, tried to get it to Burroughs, but threw it away. So back comes... Oral Roberts and Liberty is going to take it strong. Doesn't uh, make the shot, but does draw the foul. Fouls on Botts. His first, and that's the first team foul on IPFW in the second half. Pass knocked out of bounds by Jakari Johnson. Twenty-three. 
12 and a half minutes left. Kelvin Sango will inbound it to Adam Liberty. Liberty going to be watched by Ben Botts. Macedon staying in a man-to-man -man defense. Sango inside for King. Wants to drive on Burroughs. A hook shot, no good. Ball picked off by Jakari Johnson. Good defense by Burroughs. And when is the last time you saw Sean King miss? Been a while. Remember that shot right there. Burroughs in the block. Wants to drive on King. Maybe draw the fourth foul. Nice in and out moving. Knocks in the shot. Had him shaking every which way but loose. Burroughs in double figures with 10 points. And the IPFW lead, their biggest is three, 43-40. We are under 12 minutes. Liberty, pull up jumper, good. Adam Liberty now with four points. The lead is cut to one. Egerich walks. Turn over IPFW. Mike, and I was just getting ready to say they're showing confidence in the big man that they're going to let him handle the ball, and then he travels. 11.31 left here at the Coliseum. IPFW 43, Oral Roberts 42, and you're watching IPFW Basketball on CATV. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. I made you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Salam. Yeah. Salam. Hey, you want? Hey there. Can I play a five? Five. Me. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs Sorry. are making it happen. <laughs> Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding <laughs> around the world. <laughs> Rotary. Humanity in motion. Back here in Fort Wayne, here's Jerron Burroughs working on Sean King. Nice move by the senior from the Bahamas. IPFW leading 43-42, but Oral Roberts has the basketball. We return to live action. IPFW shooting 50%. They are 6 of 12 here in this second half. Calvin Sango taking it, dishing it off to King. Shot is no good, but Sean King will go to the line and shoot a couple. Follows on Jerron Burroughs, his second, team second here in the second half. I thought that was a good foul for him. I mean, there's no such thing as a good foul, but that's a good foul. Did not back down from King. Sean King, just a 66% foul shooter, and that rings off the rim and out. King now two of three at the line. Ben Botts will take a rest. with Scott back on the floor. Boy, what a first half by Sean King. Six field goals and two free throws for 14 points, and he's now one or two at the line here. And up till that point, did not score here in the second half. We're tied at 43 as we get close to the 11-minute mark. IPFW 5-1 and one at home this year, trying to get back over the 500 mark in conference play. They are 2-2. Two and two. Johnson shot blocked by King out of bounds. 16 seconds left on the shot clock. There you see 10.59 on the game clock. David Carson will inbound it. Looking for DeWitt Scott. Bring it back up top. Scott, lob pass to Carson. David wants to work. Shot, no good, but he draws the foul. Yemi Ogagne picks up his second. So many times, fouls are a result of being out of position or being faked, and that's exactly what happened with Ungaye. David Carson was two for two at the line in the first half, and he is now three for three. FFW retakes the lead, 44-43. David Carson out of Gary, Indiana. 
And he gets the favorable roll. Macedon 6-6 six six the free throw line here in the second half. Their lead is 2, 45-43 with 10.40 to go. Liberty watched by Perkins. Looking for King down low. Oh, nice feed to Sango and the cutter slashes in and banks it off the glass and in. He now has five points. And we are tied once again, this time at 45. Jakari Johnson looking for a teammate in white. And it looks like Burroughs is gonna pick up a foul. And that's three on the big man. Third team foul as well. That's a concern for head coach Dane Fife. He has been playing so well. So the Gordon Eagles have a chance to reclaim the lead. Sango watched by Jakari Johnson. Lost control of the ball for a moment. Loose ball. And a timeout is called. Look, Terry Weimer says that it was Moses E. Hambe who called the timeout. So we'll take a break. 9.59 left, and we're tied at 45. This is IPFW Basketball on CATV. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Welcome back everybody to the Memorial Coliseum. I want to remind you that the latest Mastodon scores and stats are available on the World Wide Web by going to GoMastodons.com. There you can check up on the teams, players, and you can order tickets as well. It's the official Mastodon Athletics website, GoMastodons.com. Mike, you may be asking why the Mastodons able to stay in this game. Great play in the paint, which they didn't have consistently in the first half. Everybody has scored also for the Mastodons. Well, just under 10 minutes to go, and we're even at 45. Oral Roberts with the basketball. King from eight feet, and he gets the friendly roll. First field goal of the second half for Sean King. And it's 47-45, Golden Eagles. Chris Perkins wants to do a spin move, looks for help now. Bounces it to Johnson, pass intended for Burroughs, and it's not gonna bounce by King. 9.27 left, 19 on the 35 second shot clock. Mike, I really feel like this has been an aggressive game, but it's been a clean game. Pass is picked off by Jarvis, intended for Perkins. Inside the King. Oh, a lot of people thought he traveled, but the hook shot goes down. Back-to-back -back buckets by King gives ORU a four-point lead. And King's been able to score with two players on him almost all night, all afternoon. 19 points for King. Jakari Johnson goes up. Ball doesn't drop, but uh, Jakari will shoot two. And the foul is on Ihambe. A team foul. Two shots at the line for the junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Jakari, seven, uh, I should say 68% free throw shooter. Place got quiet as the first free throw is good. Perry Johnson now with four points. And he can bring uh, IPFW to within two at 49-47 if he can convert here. In and out, no good. Rebounded by King. So ORU with a chance to build on their three-point lead as we are under nine minutes here in the second half. 
Seventh yeah. rebound for King. Ihambe, ball knocked away. Good play by Burroughs, picked up by Scott. Nice help defense by Jerron Burroughs. Now here come the Dons. Perkins running the point. Watch by Jarvis. DeWitt Scott to Carson. Looking for a cutter. 15 on the shot clock. Perkins looking for Burroughs. Can't find him, can't get him. Gets it to Carson instead. Seven on the clock. David Carson gonna go inside. Foul is gonna be called on the floor. Ogonye gets called for the foul and he was pleading his case for a travel call. Didn't happen, three fouls on Yemi Ogonye. Nine team fouls, so it's one and one for David Carson with 8.16 to go. And David is four of four at the line so far today. Chance to score with no time going off the clock. Good is the first one. David Carson is already showing dividends, Dean. Came eligible after the first semester, providing some inside help. Second one, no good. Nogane picks off the rebound. Just the second miss of the afternoon at the free throw line for IPFW. 49-47 Oral Roberts as we near the eight minute mark. King on Burroughs, banks it, no good. Perkins with the board. A rare Sean King miss from the floor. IPFW can tie it with the deuce, retake the lead with the three. Burroughs off the glass and in. Nicely done, under control, almost traveled, got it in. Burroughs with the dozen, we're tied at 49 with 7.44 to go. Remember, Oral Roberts was up by 10 at the break, 36-26. Liberty on Johnson, they're gonna call Johnson for the bump. And that is Jakari's second. Team fourth, and we have timeout on the floor. 7.36 left, don't go anywhere. IPFW 49, or were you 49? And this is IPFW Basketball on CATV. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum Anum? Agaricus Bisporus? Huh? Allium Sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Tell me what's bothering you. As a hot dog, I know I'm responsible for some bad things. Now they say my cholesterol is a risk factor for stroke. And how does that make you feel? Like a big weedy. High cholesterol is an important risk factor for strokes. Eating right and exercising can help. But National Stroke Association wants you to know that even the healthiest people are at risk. So ask your doctor about medicines that can lower cholesterol like statins. It's even more important if you've already had a stroke. Visit stroke.org today. Now you see IPFW in the white uniform for the basketball. And a nice lob from Jakari Johnson to Jerron Burroughs. Kino, as he is called, banked it off the glass and in. One of six field goals he has on the afternoon. That tied the game up at 49. That's where we're at with 7.36 left. The impressive thing about that, Mike, it was all reach. He didn't dribble, didn't step, just leaped into it. ORU with the basketball. That's Kelvin Sango, top of the key. Now hands it off to Adam Liberty. Macedon staying in a man-to-man -man defense. Sango is a bit of a slasher. And he has a tendency to be sloppy with the basketball, too. Golden Eagles would like to get the ball inside to Sean King if they can. Here's Jarvis with 12 on the shot clock. Jarvis working on Perkins, perhaps walks, draws a foul. My, my. Mike, and you can't get a break here. He travels, he misses the shot, and then he gets a foul to reward him for his miscues. Chris Perkins picks up the foul, his third team fifth. It's, well, it's one of those things. Sometimes the official will call it, sometimes they won't. In any event, Robert Jarvis, who has seven points on the day, all coming in the first half, will shoot two. And the first one is good. He is now three of three at the stripe. He uh, breaks the tie. Leading scorer for ORU, averaging 16.2 points a contest. He's an 83% free throw shooter. Jarvis out of Humble, Texas, and he is still perfect at the line today. Four of four. 
51-49 now. The ORU lead is two as we are nearing the seven minute mark. Carson to Perkins. Scott loses it, but Carson, Johnny on the spot to pick it up. 18 on the shot clock. Break for IPFW there. See if they can convert. Jakari Johnson pull up from eight. Yes. Nice. Jakari Johnson now with six points, and we are tied once again, this time at 51. 6.38 to go. And he did something we very rarely see anymore. That's a mid-range shot. King out to Liberty. Liberty inside. Ball knocked away. Double team is King. Oh, he reverse layup. No good. Ball's tapped out to Liberty. Colliding with Jakari. 19-footer off the rim. No. Loose ball picked up by Scott. I'm going to have a foul on Sango. Great play all the way around for IPFW. They triple team King. They force the shot. They get the rebound or get a hand on it. Second foul on Sango, but more importantly, Dean, the 10th team foul. 6.17 left, IPFW and double bonus the rest of the way. And Jerron Burroughs will shoot two. Jerron has been a streaky free throw shooter this year. Just a, a, a tad under 60% at the line, but there was one game he was seven of seven. First one good. Well, I have to think that the uh, Summer League Commissioner Tom Dupo and Associate Commissioner Ed Graham, who are in attendance today, are enjoying what they see. Get a chance to visit with them when IPFW was at South Dakota State Saturday. Second free throw by Burroughs is good too. And IPFW has a 53-51 lead. 6-10 to go. Sango, Lewis, they kick it out. Liberty for three, yes. Adam Liberty with his third field goal today, his first tray. Just like that, the Golden Eagles retake the lead, 54-53. Suffice to say he's at Liberty to take that shot. The Quipster, <laughs> DeWitt Scott to Jakari Johnson. Give and go. Oh, DeWitt Scott barely able to keep it alive. Ball was tipped initially. 10 in the shot clock. Perkins needs to do something. Gets it to Burroughs. Three on the clock. Skip pass. Scott's going to float it up off the rim. Rebounded by Jarvis. Jarvis quickly up the floor, taking it coast to coast. No good. Burroughs pulls down the board. That could have been disastrous. Perkins. Quickly back up the floor to Burroughs, back to Chris Perkins. Lob pass to Carson, and we got a foul. I think it's going to be a Lewis, and that should be his fourth. Marcus Lewis now has four personals, and I think David Carson is going to go to the line to shoot a couple. I think the term that comes to mind, Dean, right now for IPFW is poison patience. I would agree. They have it. Uh, their one-point deficit, but they are playing at home, and they seem to play better at home. David Carson is 5 of 6 at the line, and I jinxed him. Just the third miss of this afternoon. Sean King comes back on the floor with three fouls. And uh, Marcus Lewis will have a seat. Moses Ehambe comes back on the floor, and Kelvin Sangle will sit down. 5.09 left. One more free throw coming for David Carson. If he can make it, we will be deadlocked again at 54. And the friendly bounce for IPFW. 12 points for David Carson. IPFW trailed by 10 at halftime, but we are tied with just under five minutes to go. Jarvis from downtown misses everything. But a good play by Ihambe. He was in the air and he banked it off the uh, leg of Jakari Johnson out of bounds. So ORU retains possession with 19 on the shot clock. That is probably the most embarrassing thing that can happen to you in a game is to have it knocked off you. Liberty wants to drive. Shot is no good, but we got a foul. Both Carson and Burroughs were up in the air and they're gonna call Carson for the foul which is David's second, and that's a break for IPFW. 
Had it been on Burroughs, it'd be his fourth. But Adam Liberty will go to the line and shoot two. First time at the free throw line today. For the 6-2 senior. And the first free throw is no good. Liberty, a 76% foul shooter. Ehambi will sit down. Sang goes back on the floor. Ogani is back on the floor. And here is the second free throw. And it's good by Liberty. 55-54 ORU with 4.40 to go here at the Memorial Coliseum. Kari Johnson looking for some help. Looking for help. Gets it to Carson. Four and a half minutes left. Chris Perkins watched by Jarvis. In the corner for Jakari. Lob pass to Burroughs. Burroughs wants to work on King. Spin left, spin right. The body going up. Shot off the rim. No. Carson with it. He puts it partially blocked by King. Loose ball. OYU retains it. Liberty has it. Sean King holding his ground, playing with three fouls, but playing strong underneath the, uh, the rim. IPFW doing everything it needed to do in that play other than come up with the basketball. Liberty to Sango. 350 left. Liberty for three. Big basket by Adam Liberty, a second tray. And a 30-second timeout called by ORU with 3.48 to go. Should mention that ORU is down to two timeouts. And you see the IPFW Brain Trust had coach Dane Fife. So should coach Tony Jasek, assistant coaches Dan Bure, Jared Good. Well, that was a big bucket that time by Liberty. Well, IPFW will continue their homestand um, a week from Saturday, they will be taking on the Golden Grizzlies of Oakland University. I should mention that this coming Saturday, January 12th, they're going to be entertaining Centenary. And it will be a doubleheader, women's, men's. And both those games will be right here on CATV. Oakland coming from your old stomping grounds. Yep, the northern suburbs of Detroit. So here we go. 58-54, IPFW trailing by four with a basketball. Perkins watched by Jarvis. Big possession for the Mastodons. They have got to make the right shot and they've got to get good patience. Carson, oh, everything but go down the cylinder. Rebounded by Ogagne. A little bit too much English on that time by David Carson. Sango. Gonna take it. Dish it off to Liberty. Or are you willing to burn some clock? Loose ball on the floor. Jump ball called, and the possession will go to IPFW. IPFW needed that. Scott Sutton, head coach of ORU, slamming his foot to the ground. 310 left here at the Coliseum. It's ORU 58, IPFW 54, and you're watching IPFW basketball on CATV. like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. We've all heard of blackouts, when the power goes out and no one has heat or electricity. We've also heard of whiteouts, you know, when a storm is so bad you can't see anything but the whiteness of the snow. But how many of you have heard of a pinkout? Join me, Susan Alderman, on IPFW Up Close and you'll learn what a pinkout is and how basketball and breast cancer go hand in hand. That's IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Again, an upcoming graphic of IPFW home events on uh, Monday, January 14th. The women's team will take on Oral Roberts at 7 p.m. at the Hillier Gate Sports Center. And on the 19th, a doubleheader here at the Coliseum. Women at 1 o'clock, men at 4 o'clock. 
Again, that's uh, coming up. And again, reminder that this coming Saturday, Centenary and Towny Twin Bill here at the Coliseum. Three minutes to go here in this one. IPFW down 58-54 to the two-time defending league champion, Golden Eagles of Oral Roberts. Key possession for the Dons here. Scott will launch a three. No, go oh, they're gonna call traveling on DeWitt Scott. And I can't tell you what Dane Five said, but he wasn't happy with the call. Every possession almost as important as scoring because if you give it up, Oral Roberts has a chance to make this a two, maybe even three possession game. Ninth turnover on IPFW, so with 2.50 to go, ORU can stretch their lead. And they are up, 58-54. Ogagne, watched by Carson. And again, looks like ORU is going to run a modified form of a weave and look for a backdoor cutter. Jarvis. And they get it into Scott, and he is blocked by Carson. The putback is good by Ogagne. Big bucket for ORU. Gives them lots of breathing room. Six-point lead. Three-pointer by Scott. No good. Rebounded by Ehambe. Mike, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. IPFW has no business taking three-pointers at this point, unless they've got a great shot. Now they have to play good defense now with 2.07 to go. They're down by six. Liberty watched by Jakari Johnson to Jarvis. Burroughs comes out. Oh, bumping but no call. Ten in the shot clock. Ihambe nearly loses the ball, but somehow gets it to Liberty. A pull-up jumper from 12. No. King with the offensive board. Foul underneath. And it's on IPFW. King was done every which way but collared. David Carson with his third personal. It's the seventh team foul, so Sean King will go to the line for one and one. King three of four at the line so far today. And at eight field goes to that, 19 points for the 6'10 senior. And figure to block out here at IPFW that time down, Dean. First free throw is good. 61-54. Make it 62. And IPFW had better have one, one run left in them. They've got 95 seconds. Carson gonna have to take it down low. Spin move. Shot partially blocked by King. And ORU gets the ball back with a minute 18 to go. 62-54, Golden Eagles. No, Gagne fouled by Carson. That's David's fourth, team eighth. And Yemi Ogagne will go to the line. One and one. And you see Dane Fife, hands on hips. His team trailed by 10, but they had to lead on a couple of occasions here in the second half. And Ogagne knocks down the first, giving him a second. If he looks frustrated, he has a right to be. 1-11 left, and another free throw by Ogagne can put all you back up by 10. No, Burroughs with the board. IPFW has to score in a hurry. And you can see you are you going to stretch that defense out. Perkins has it. Wants to drive on Jarvis. Dishes off. Burroughs misses the jam. Loose ball. And ORU comes up with it. Dane Fife is livid. And a technical foul has been called on the head coach of IPFW with 47.4 seconds left. Frustration, Dean. No, there is no question about it. He, his team was calling a timeout down there. He's frustrated because even when you have an open look for a slam dunk, he can't connect on it. Robert Jarvis, who was four of four so far at the free throw line, will shoot two more. And the first one drops through. You could say these are nails going into the coffin. PFW now trailing by 10. Make it 11. Jarvis now with 11 points. 
Ben Botts comes in for Chris Perkins for IPFW. Zach Plackmeyer is going to check in as well. And it remains Oral Roberts basketball. That hurts as well. Sango will inbound it. To drive it stolen by Jakari Johnson. Jakari will bank it off the glass and in. Good hustle there by Jakari. Oh, are you? Oh, Plackmeyer foul Sango going for the ball with 42 seconds left. Zach's third, team ninth. I'll make that 10th. As the technical foul also counts as a team foul. Kelvin Sango will go to the free throw line. Sango with five points so far today. Southpaw. And the first one is good. I'll say this, Dean, I, uh, ORU has hit their free throws here in the second half. They struggled early, but they definitely have, and they've hit them down the, down the stretch. Mike, I really feel like IPFW played a good game. They played well defensively. They played well as they, but their shot selection was horrible, in my opinion. Plackemeyer is going to take it inside. Oh, knocked away by King to Ogagne. Adding insult to injury, and David Carson has just fouled out. By that, I mean, sometimes they should have went inside, but instead they looked for the three, and then when they should have went for the three or a, a mid-range shot, they would try to go inside and try to force it inside. Well, Robert Jarvis is going to go back to the line, and David Carson has fouled out. Dane Fife has to make a substitution, and he's going to bring Chuck Oegerich in. So David Carson will foul out. Having scored 12 points this afternoon. 27.2 seconds left. ORU is up by 10. And looks like they will go to 4-0 in conference play. And 9-5 and overall. I will say, Mike, you can't challenge their effort. You can't challenge, for the most part, their concentration and poise. You can challenge the way they finish this game, though. A couple of possessions, the ball went halfway down the cylinder and came out as Jarvis knocks down both free throws. He's eight for eight at the line today. 68-56. Botts will launch a three. Bodies hit, no good. Jarvis with the board. I think Fife thought that might have been a foul call, but not the case. Jarvis, Liberty, and ORU's gonna run out the clock. Seven, six, five. Three, two, one, and that's it. ORU goes to 4-0 in the conference. IPFW drops to 2-3, and, and a tough loss. Final again, 68-56, and we're back with a post-game show from the Memorial Coliseum in a couple of moments right here on CATV. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. The power's out, but you've planned ahead, and your food safety plan is on. You've stocked up on shelf-stable foods and a can opener in case you're in the dark for a while. You don't open the fridge, foods there will be safe for up to four hours if the door stays closed. You keep the freezer shut too, and you've kept it full. A full freezer will keep food frozen for about two days. A half full freezer, about one day. For longer outages, you move cold foods to an insulated cooler with plenty of ice or freezer gels, and you use a thermometer to ensure foods remain no higher than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. 
If the power returns quickly, you make sure freezer foods have ice crystals. And check foods in the refrigerator with a food thermometer to make sure they're at 40 degrees or below. If not, or if there's any doubt, throw it out. To learn more, log on to AskKaren.gov or call the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Meat and Poultry Hotline at one mp hotline A message from USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum, along with Dean Jackson. I'm Mike Maz. IPFW falls short this afternoon, losing to the two-time defending Summit League champion Golden Eagles from Oral Roberts University by a final score of 68 to 56. And we're joined now by IPFW assistant basketball coach Dan Bure. And Dan, I don't know exactly where to start. ORU, they took it to you early in the first half, led by 10 at the break, but as almost true to form. The Dons come out with a good start to the second half and actually had the lead on a couple of occasions. You know, Mike, that, that's exactly right. I thought our guys gave an outstanding effort. Uh, obviously, a couple plays didn't go our way late. Uh, we kind of dug ourselves in a little bit of a hole in the first half, uh, just making a couple costly mistakes. Jakari uh, had that missed layup in transition, and then they came back and get a three-point play. So that's that's kind of a five-point swing there. And then, obviously, the last play of the half sticks out. But, you know, our guys fought. You know, Oral Roberts is, is undefeated in the league, and, and they're, they're going to be a tough team to beat home or away. Uh, we got to be proud of our effort. ORU, their big guy, Sean King, had a fine afternoon, but he had, I think, 14 points in the first half. What, uh, what did the staff address to the team in, uh, in trying to stop him in the second half? Well, basically, we, we told our big guys to trust our help because our philosophy in terms of post defense is we're going to front the post, and we're going to try to not let them catch it, but that means that our guards, the weak side guard, needs to be ready to help. So we told our bigs to trust that the guard will be there, and I think we did a better job of that in the second half, and that all starts with communication, uh, which we did. Coach, I thought your players played a very tough game, very poised, very confident. However, there were times when I thought maybe some of those shots were forced. It seemed to me that they were taking shots that they maybe should have took a little closer, maybe also forced some stuff inside. Uh, there's no question about it. I think uh, the tendency is when the team gets down or an opponent scores a basket on you, you want to come back down and, and, and answer right away. And I think we've had a little bit of a problem with that. I don't think our players are selfish. It's they're trying to do the best to help the team win. And they need to understand that at times we could be a little bit more patient and really get the best opportunity uh, to take a shot, even if that means taking one late in the shot clock. But overall, uh, a pretty good effort. And I also felt down low almost the entire game, all afternoon, two, three players on Sean King. I thought defensively, he's going to get 20 points a game. They're just going to be games like that. But I thought defensively, they played a pretty good game on him. I, th I think so. I mean, I, I, they scored 68 points, and you figure about six of those are on foul late. So they're way under their average scoring about, you know, 68 points. And I think that's a good job. We wanted to come and hold them. Uh, and, you know, it just, it's really tough with their size uh, to match that because Jerron Burroughs, although he is 6'8", he's only about 200 pounds, so he's got he's to really use all of his muscle to contain a guy like King. Dan, we talked about this when we were together out in the Dakotas. The loss of Demetrius Johnson at the point guard position hurt the team out there, and it hurt today. It's unfortunate. Hopefully, as you mentioned to me before the game, he'll be back in two to three weeks. But that senior leadership and the ability to see the open court, uh, that could have helped the dance today. No question. Demetrius is one of our has been one of our go-to guys all season. Uh, he's a guy that comes from Kent State, so he knows how to play in some of these big games. He's got some confidence to himself. Uh, but I think that Zach Plackmeyer and Chris Perkins have done a really good job uh, filling in for Demetrius. You know, there's no telling what would happen if Demetrius was here, but we're trying to tell our guys, you know, right now he's not. Uh, so we need to kind of continue on without him and keep giving that same effort uh, night in and night out. Well, we appreciate you coming over and chatting. It's never easy after a loss, but um, hopefully a better day is ahead starting Saturday night against Centenary. Yeah, we'll try to get one. Thanks, guys. Thank you. It's Dan Beret, assistant head coach for IPFW men's basketball. Again, the Dons lose today 68-56.
We'll take a time out, come back, give you some highlights and final numbers from the Memorial Coliseum right here on CATV. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share their toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well, like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Pizza! Pizza! I must eat! Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man! Honey! Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back one final time to the Coliseum. Highlights from this afternoon's game. You see a dunk by Jerron Burroughs. W in the white uniforms. DeWitt Scott with a big three-point field goal. And Burroughs with that nice dipsy do move. Burroughs showed good patience all game. Sean King, what a game he had. Got the friendly roll himself. Then a little lob pass from Jakari Johnson to Burroughs. Banks it off the glass and in. That may have been IPFW's play of the game. Jakari Johnson with a pull-up jumper. Lewis kicked it out. Big three-point field goal late by Adam Liberty. And this was a good uh, play, too. Kick out. Liberty again from downtown. Ball knocked away, but Johnny in the spot was a Gagne. And there's a steal by Jakari Johnson. And he banks it off the glass and in. Those are your highlights. Now here are your final numbers. ORU, 22 of 52 from the floor for 42%. 4 of 11 from three-point range. 20 of 28 at the foul line. They had 10 assists, 40 rebounds, and 4 steals. IPFW, 19 of 55 from the floor for 35%. 4 of 14 from three-point range. 14 of 17 at the stripe. They also had 10 assists, corralled 31 rebounds, and picked up 5 steals. Individually, well, ORU was led by... Sean King with 21 points, Robert Jarvis with 13, and Adam Liberty with 11. John Burroughs with 14 points, David Carson 12, and DeWitt Scott with 9 led the way for IPFW. The Dons again dropped to 2 and 3 in the conference, 5 and 12, make it 2 and 4 in the conference, 5 and 12 overall. Earl Roberts remains undefeated in league play at 4 and 0. They're now 9 and 5. Next up, Saturday night here at the Coliseum, Centenary comes to town. It's a women's men's doubleheader, and both of those games will be here right here on CATV. 4 o'clock for the women, 7 o'clock for the men. I want to remind you, men's volleyball gets underway. Season starts this Friday on the road at Ohio State, but a week from uh, tonight, uh, the uh, 18th of January, Brigham Young comes to Fort Wayne for the first time. Cougars National Power. Hilliard Gate Sports Center, 7 o'clock. First serve at the Gate Center, and you'll see that match here on CATV. Now, that'll do it for our telecast of Summit League Basketball today. I want to thank Dean Jackson for coming in and helping out. 
and we thank you for tuning in. Our final score again, Oral Roberts 68 and IPFW 56. Remind you, Saturday, next action, 4 o'clock for the women, 7 o'clock for the men, the opposition Centenary College out of Freeport, Louisiana. That's it. Please enjoy what's left of your Thursday, and we'll see you soon. Not an energy.